adopting a different narrative than the first film. This movie ropes in its LeBron James vs. Looney Tunes hook by introducing a villainous self-aware AI system overseen by the villainous AI G Rhythm. He doesn't take too kindly to LeBron dissing the studio's idea of injecting his likeness into a large number of their properties. First of all, this is the kind of movies that we get when the people in charge no longer believe there is any real distinction between art and intellectual property. It's probably one of the most shameless pieces of cross-promotion cinema has ever seen. This sequel stuffs so many pop culture cameos into 115 minutes. This movie can't seem to decide who this film is for, and probably no one at Warner Bros. is aware either. Loaded with nostalgic references to its predecessor and the expansive worlds of Looney Tunes, Game of Thrones, The Wizard of Oz, Harry Potter, DC Comics, and just about every other lucrative IP under the Warner Bros. umbrella, this movie is a nauseating example of product placement in overdrive. Not since the Lego movie, also released by Warner Bros, has there been so much cross-promotion in a movie. It's a cynical exercise in marketing that makes you want to walk away in disgust. The cross-promotion was so nauseating and over the top, it's like going on a studio backlot tour. The movie feels like if the story outline was contrived to fit the marketing agenda so that everything had to take place in the so-called Warner Bros server first. On a narrative level, it's essentially a lazy rehash of the original film's plot. It's predictable. The screenplay begins by belittling the idea of bastardizing cherished Warner Bros. content and then bufflingly spends the next 90 minutes doing just that. It's a strange move to have your protagonist literally scoff at the suggestion of inserting a foreign character into an existing IP and just a few scenes later, the movie is doing exactly that. If you're over 12 and not that into basketball match between cartoon characters and ghoulish aliens, this movie is real boring. The presence of these worlds, governed by their own iconic characters and aesthetic, makes it clear that this movie isn't really a story, or even a movie. It's a video game you cannot play and a theme park you cannot explore. Watching a group of cartoons play a basketball video game is about as enjoyable as sitting behind your best friend while they play Mario Kart. The big showdown arrives with 45 minutes still left on the clock, which is almost as long as an actual game of basketball. If you do find yourself tiring of the rather repetitive action on the court, at least you can kill time by playing a game of Spot the Cameo. Overall, this movie is mostly child-friendly fare that proves a colorful, inexplicable distraction that's unlikely to retain any type of legacy for itself. This sequel rarely takes the time to stand on its own two feet. It's far too busy mining existing IP to distract you from its generic screenplay and the inescapable fact you've seen this all before.